What science is and how and why it works. If there is no free will and everything is deter determined and then there is no blame to put on people, responsibility for what they do. Couldn't, I mean, that kind of implies a certain view on the world. And if you personally, when, when did you actually realize that you had no free will? And how did it feel? And does, um, it actually, does it actually have effect on your everyday life? Um, I was, it was about a month after my 13th birthday and in my very strict religious studies that I went to almost every day of the week, something came up in there and it produced a huge existential crisis in me of how to reconcile this with God and our actions and being held responsible for our actions and being punished for them, yet God controlled that and that's the way he chose to make the world and, and all of that. And, oh, I was going to my teachers and bringing this. Up. And then one night I woke up at 2 o'clock in the morning and I said, oh, I get it. There's no God. And then about three minutes later, I said, and there's no free will either. And then about two minutes after that, I said, and there's no purpose to life. And I actually sat up for about five hours at that point and scribbled out everything that I was thinking. And ever since then, I have had zero capacity for religiosity, for spirituality, for believing that there's free will, for believing that the universe is anything other than cold and empty and unempathic and pointless. And you know what? I've been depressed ever since. <laughs> you know, I think that is an unavoidable outcome of that. Like, we get an awful lot of sense of purpose and sense of comfort and sense of safety from our myths and the notion is that worth doing um unfortunately i think absolutely yes i'm depressive as hell um you know you show me something wonderful that happens in the world you show me something that terrible that happens in the world and i feel depressed you show me something wonderful that happens in the world and somehow i'm going to be convinced why that's poignant and that's bittersweet and why it's not going to last and why it's wonderful amid so much pain and all of that and or or i joke about this with my wife who is not at all depressive but she tends towards anxiety um anxiety is when you're constantly worried that something terrible is going to happen, happen to your children, happen to your loved ones, whatever. Depression is when you feel absolutely confident that nothing bad is going to happen. Your children are safe. They are loved. They are going to have long, happy, productive lives. And it's so sad you can barely stand it. It's so sad. Somehow you can turn that into the same conclusion. So yeah, unfortunately, that's kind of my mindset. And, you know, I've been incredibly lucky in all sorts of ways. That's one way in which my brain chemistry has not been lucky for me. Uh, actually, one of the questions from the comment section from YouTube. Um, I'll, I'll just going to read. All of my life, 28 years, I suffer from depression and anxiety. Is there a way to live happy life without medication? And thank you for your work. It's a phenomenal question. It's so important and it is so relevant to millions of people. Um, if you are very, very lucky, you were one of the people where you have one episode of major depression, you heal. Statistically, it's no more likely to happen to you than to anybody else. You have two episodes, you have three or four still the same thing you get four or five or so and that's where statistically you are now likely to have joined the the cadre of people who are going to be clinically depressed on and off for the rest of their lives a lucky subset of those people it resolves often as you get older if the depression doesn't go away the the edge the 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 razor quality to it can go away, um, but that's lucky. For the most part, your need psychotherapy, 
uh, professional or otherwise, or you are going to need meds. And one of the clearest things out there is if you have a choice, if you have severe problems with depression, and if you have a choice between psychotherapy or medication, your choice is to do both because they work much better synergistic, synergistically than either alone. You want to think of it as what the medication does is it breaks the back of the depression. It gets you a first foothold on the beach. And what the psychotherapy now allows you to do is be able to actually have the, the psychic energy to start doing the hard work to figure out how you got there and how you can do things differently to change that. The two of them in combination are far better. Um, and amid that, an important thing to emphasize, at least in the United States, there's a frequent critique of psychiatry, political left, and I'm about as much of a leftist as you can get. Nonetheless, there's this critique that, oh, psychiatric medication, they're abused, they're the means by which psychiatry is the, the whore of governments and suppression. They just serve the the means of pharmaceutical companies to make money and profits. Yes, it is absolutely the case that a lot of these drugs are over-medicated and they're medicated at the convenience of some doctor or they're medicated for people who are society's troublemakers. Yes, 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 all, the, all of that. But at the same time, if you are one of the millions of people who have a serious problem with clinical depression um, and it is not treated, it is one of the most life-threatening diseases that exists on this planet in terms of the likelihood of it destroying the quality of your life or destroying your life. And it is not a measure of your moral failings or your lack of sufficient backbone or free will. It is a biochemical genetic disorder of your brain chemistry being screwed up. And often the first critical way of saving you from that in the most like literal possible way is medication. So when it's used right, thank God for it. Actually, we received one of the letters uh, saying thank you from a lady whose name is Yelena, and she actually also said that she is living with OCD and depression, and that actually your lectures and your books helped her to like to handle that. Uh, so, in terms of how to live, like yeah, I mean your lectures are doing good things for well, people and actually helping. That's. That's good to hear, and that's so important in the realm of mental illness. I mean, the problem with depression is the word depression, at least in English, both explains, you know, something crummy happens to you and you feel kind of depressed for the rest of the day and you're sort of in a bad mood, and the same word describes this disease that destroys your life. And what we're mostly surrounded by are people who get depressed because something crummy happens and a day later or even a week later, they get better. And hey, why is it that you have not been able to get out of bed for the last three months because life feels so pointless? Why don't I have the self-discipline that these people do? Why don't I have the gumption? Why don't I have the strength to work my way through, to fight through this and get over this depression? And that's an incredibly damaging viewpoint. A major depression is as biological of a disorder as is diabetes. And you don't sit down somebody with diabetes and say, oh, come on, what's the deal with you and insulin? Stop babying yourself. You don't really need this insulin stuff. It is as real of a disease. And the fact that society stigmatizes it and most other psychiatric disorders is tragic, if for no other reason, that it makes people less likely to seek help.